Today's video is all about the little black dress. I have selected several different sewing patterns to share with you that I think would make really great little black dresses using knit fabric. The patterns you will see here are meant for knit fabrics. At the end of the video, I will share with you some knit fabrics that I have selected and everything you see in this video will be linked below. I just think that knit fabrics tend to be in general, at least in my opinion, really quick to sew relative to wovens, which most of the time require linings or closures. But with knits, not only are they comfortable, but they tend to be a lot easier to sew. And I also don't think they're that tricky to sew with. I used to be afraid of knits, but now I really prefer them. So the patterns you see here will be shown in no particular order. And when I show each pattern, I will also list some fabrics that I would personally use to make the dress. And by no mean is the list exhaustive. And you choose whatever fabric you like. I'm just giving some ideas as this video is meant to be more of an inspirational video. So let's get started with the first pattern, which is McCall's 7967. This is a more bodycon dress, as they call them. As you can see, it seems to be quite fitted, at least, through the bodice, the waist, and through the hips. So going through the line art, you can see that you've got a long sleeve option with a puffy upper sleeve. With the neckline, you can have the option to have a little bit of ruching there at the center front, which gives it kind of a sweetheart neckline. I think that's done using some elastic there at the center front. Then you have a short puff sleeved option. You also have a long sleeve version with some gathers there at the top of the sleeve. And then there is a sleeveless version. So there's several options for you to choose from here. I think that this is definitely on the mark for little black dresses. And as far as fabric suggestions are concerned, I would look at some jersey knits, like poly, rayon cotton, even some cupro, stretch velvets and velour, sweater knits, ponte, and double brushed poly. I think you've got a lot of options for this pattern. I would probably stay away from ITY or really thin, super thin, lightweight, drapey knits, um, just because the way that this pattern is more bodycon, you want something that's more medium weight. That's just my opinion. Next, we have McCall's 7538. And this pattern does include a top version, so that's great. But there are three versions of the dress in here and two of them have a fuller skirt and for that you've got the sleeveless version or the long sleeve version and then there's a more bodycon dress so it's going to be fitted through the hips. Why I like this pattern is it's got these diagonal seam lines or these they're really for style and for fit. I think it will be really slimming and there's opportunity to use contrasting fabric. Now I know we're focusing on little black dresses, but you can play with textures and maybe different shades of black, maybe add some uh, metallic black in there. Or even if you just use the same black fabric throughout the dress, I think it's going to be lovely because of those diagonal seam lines. And for the fabrics that I think would work well, I think more medium weight jersey knits, stretch velvets, a lighter weight ponte, and double brushed poly would work really well. Next we have McCall's 6986 and this is a wrap dress. I think um, wrap dresses are really popular and they can be really flattering. This is a Palmer Pletch pattern, which if you're not familiar with Palmer Pletch, they um, offer some patterns and their whole method on fitting is tissue fitting with the pattern. And so the Palmer Pletch patterns will have specific lines on the pattern to help you fit. 
but um, you don't have to use um, the method to use this pattern. You can just use it as normal if you want, but I think it is pretty cool that it is a Palmer Pletch pattern. And in any case, um, there's a couple, a few different versions here. So you have the sleeveless version, you have a three quarter um, length sleeve, and then a longer sleeve. But I really, what I really like about this particular pattern is this sort of paneling that's in the waist it's almost like um, it looks like a belt and I think it's really cool I think when I make this dress I will use a like a stretch pleather um, for that paneling there and um, as far as the fabrics go you can use a medium weight medium weight jersey knit that's what um, I would use not I, I, I would stay away from really lightweight fabrics here um, stretch velvets and velour, a lighter weight Ponte. Um, I know I said stay away from lighter weight, but when it comes to Ponte, because Ponte is a double knit and it's a little bit like, stiffer, if you will, than knits, um, try to get a lighter weight Ponte. And then double brush poly, I think all of these fabrics would work well. Next, we have McCall 7313, and here you can see we have several different options for a fit and flare dress, and this is a basically a beginner pattern, a learn to sew pattern, so this would be a great option if you are newer to sewing. Um, so you can see here we have different sleeve lengths, and there's um, a higher neck version, a scoop neck version, and the skirt is about knee length. Um, it looks like there's a couple of different lengths here, a shorter length, um, which will be higher than the knee, and then one that's right at the knee. So this being fit and flare, I think, um, works well with many different um, figure types. And at least for me, it's one of my favorite silhouettes to wear. And I would sew this out of a more of a medium weight jersey knit there's stretch velvets and velour that could work, lighter weight ponte, and double brush poly I think would all work well. Next is McCall 6752. So this looks like it would be pretty fast actually to um, sew. So in terms of dresses, we've got two different options. You've got the cowl neck with a um, sleeve and then you've got the sleeveless version which is more of a, a wrap top and it looks like it's got an elasticized waist it's probably um well it's more fitted through the hips and knee length there's also um, a top in this pattern so if you wanted to sew a top that's a bonus so i would use jersey knits um I think you could get away with even a lighter weight, um, definitely, because you want to make sure you get the drape, especially if you're sewing view B, which is the cowl neck. Um, cupro, I think I'm planning to make a dress out of a, a jersey cupro with, with this. Um, some stretch velvets and velour. You want to make sure you've got some good drape, though, with these. And some ITY. You can also use uh, probably double brush poly if you wanted as well, or single brush poly would work here as, as well. Moving on, we've got another Palmer Pletch pattern for McCall's. This is 5974, and this is a wrap dress. Um, well, it's called the perfect knit dress. Well, what? I think it's like a faux wrap, wrap dress, basically. Uh, views C and D, I believe. View A is not a wrap dress. It's got some gathering there coming out from the um, waist, and then there is a... Um, panel there and view A and B so you can do sleeveless for view A, um, long sleeve for view B and then if you look at this the back they do require a zipper. I do not think that is necessary at all and I personally would not use that. Um, for this pattern I would recommend jersey knits. You could probably get away with light to medium weight um, fabrics here, some stretch velvets. Be careful that that are they are not too heavy though. Um, ITY double brush poly, single brush poly would be great. Next, we've got McCall's eight one four two, and in particular, so you can 
do whatever you want here. There is a longer version. This is version C in this black sequin. I particularly like um, the off the shoulder version and then the version that's over here, the sleeveless version that I've got the line art here over to the right. Um, and then there's also this uh, long sleeve version with the, the sleeves, the nice puffy sleeves, balloon sleeves. And then you've got some, it looks like some ruching here in the center front. So you could use jersey knits, stretch velvets and velour, um, double brush poly, even single brush poly, ITY, and then more of these novelty knits like this. Um, she's got clearly a stretch fabric with sequins on it, that of course would work. So this is definitely more like party dress, even clubbing if, if you go clubbing. Um, so that's, this is a, maybe New Year's Eve you can make this dress and be comfortable in a knit fabric. All right, next we have um, an indie pattern company, Pattern Emporium, and this happens to be their most recent, as of this video, release, which is called the Flossom Dress, and it is a bodycon dress, and as you can see here, there is, um, you know, it's a little bit revealing there at, in the chest. Um, so this kind of, I think this is a bit of a trend right now, so I wanted to offer this dress up and you know pattern emporium if you haven't sewn a pattern emporium pattern they are easy to follow and uh, yes it's pdf so you do have have to keep that in mind but this is a pop becoming a popular pattern and i think it would be a good party dress um and again it's super comfortable because you're going to be sewing it out of knit and i recommend or a medium weight jersey knit, double brushed poly. Um, I have ITY here. I'm not sure why I put ITY. I probably would stay clear of the ITY for this one and put, um, I think a stretch velvet could be good. And I picked this particular picture out of the, out of the website because I like that you use this stretch lace as the top part i think that's really cool so you can do um, you can be creative with that part next is another indie pattern it's the sewaholic davy dress this is a fit and flare dress and it's achieved through the use of princess seams and i believe that this dress does ask for a zipper in the back, or maybe it's just a center back seam. I can't really see too clearly, but um, you may be able to omit the zipper if it does require one. But there is a little like kind of keyhole um, at the center front, which I think is cute. Uh, again, I love fit and flare. This is a pattern that I have that I've been meaning to make myself. Um, I would use uh, lighter weight ponties or double knits. You can do scuba, crepe, or crepe knit. Now, when I say um, scuba crepe, it's a little bit different than what you normally think of scuba, which is typically more stiff and used for form, more form-fitting garments or structured garments. Um, it's it's not like that. Uh, so just keep that in mind. And then there's stretch velvet and velours, which could possibly work with this too. Next up is Butterick 5079. This is an interesting dress because it's got this sort of like tie twist in the front. So I thought it was, was a little bit different. Um, I just bought this myself off of eBay. So I'm excited to make it at some point. Uh, you've got a longer sleeve version and then a sleeveless version. I would recommend jersey knits, stretch velvets, Possibly. If they're lighter enough weight, you could get away with it because you have to remember you're doing this twist in the front and you don't want it to be too bulky. So just make sure if it's a lighter weight stretch velvet, like a penny crushed kind of velvet, sometimes those really work nicely. ITY, double brush poly and even single brush poly would work well. Moving along, we have Itch to Stitch the Antrim Dress. This is, it's got kind of like a surplice bodice. It's got a little bit of gathering there at the bust. 
It's got some um, sheared waistband and a nice kind of more full skirt. I think this is very lovely. It's got an it's it's another kind of fit and flare silhouette. I think jersey knits, um, scuba crepe you might be able to if you have a, if you find a nice one lightweight one. Double brush poly, single brush poly, even ity. You've got a lot of options for this. Next is Vogue 1595, and this is a very simple yet sophisticated dress. I like the kind of like dolman type sleeves. It's got a dart in the front, and the it's kind of little fitted through the hips. It's got a back vent and then some back darts there at the waist. I just think it's a very, very lovely dress. So you can use, I would use Ponte double knits on the lighter weight side of those. A scuba crepe could be nice or crepe knits, stretch velvets and velours, and a wool jersey could be nice for the cooler weather. Next is Vogue 1593, which is a Paco Peralta pattern. So this is really cool. It's kind of reminiscent of a biker jacket. It's got that vibe because you've got that zipper in the front. Um, this is a, a pattern I've had for a while and um, haven't made, but when I do, I think a Ponte or a scuba crepe or crepe knit would be good. Um, as you can see here, it's uh, more bodycon, and, and those types of patterns, I would want to use more medium weight fabrics that help keep the shape. Next, we've got a Sinclair pattern. This is the Jessica pattern. This is a bodycon dress. It is fitted through the bodice, the waist, the hips, and then you kind of have, mm, I guess I'll just call it like a little mermaid have a mermaid effect but it's at the it, it's a knee length dress so let's just call this a flounce um, but that's not the only option you can do a turtleneck with three quarter length sleeves um, their short sleeve long sleeve version just a plain bodycon dress with no frills and then you can do a bigger flounce that is actually more asymmetrical so you can mix and match the the sleeves and in the hemline so it's a lot you can do with this pattern I would use jersey knits so I, I would do medium weight specifically with these stretch velvets velours double brush poly and lighter weight ponte next is simplicity 8688 so we've got quite a few options here there is an asymmetrical options like she is wearing here and then you've got your more fuller skirt, kind of fit and flare looking dress. There's different sleeve options. So these are like kind of grown on or cut on sleeves. I can't quite remember the term here, but you've got three quarter length option, shorter length that are more flowy. And then I like what they've got here at the waist. It's like a waistband. Some of them look a little bit like sheared or um, then there's a more flat, plain one. So I think this is a very flattering silhouette. And I would recommend some jersey knits, stretch velvets, maybe an ITY. You could probably pull that off. Double brush poly or single brush poly. Next is the Nina Lee Mayfair dress. And that, yes, that is me. I made this dress oh, about, I don't know, over a month ago. I got this pattern with my Sew Magazine and I would never used the Nina Lee pattern before, but I really, really like this dress. I really like this pattern and I'm definitely gonna make it again. I'm considering making it in red and in black. And so what I'm wearing here in this dress is a Cupro jersey and it worked really well. So any kind of jersey knits would work. ITY, double brush poly, it'll be a little tad bit thicker single brush poly would work as well so yeah lovely lovely pattern okay we're getting there we have three more left 
Next, we've got Vogue 1584, which is a Tracy Reese pattern. This is really cool. Um, the neckline's got some pleats on one side. It's an asymmetrical neckline. Um, the silhouette is fit and flare. I really like the fabric that um, she is wearing in this example. I think it is a jacquard knit, uh, knit jacquard or however you want to call it. But I think medium weight jersey knits, stretch velvets and velour could even work. Um, knit jacquard, as I just said, um, ponte and double brushed poly uh, you could get away with here. Um, I think it, it really, uh, this uh, wants more medium weight, but yet drapey, if that makes sense. Um, this one is definitely in my queue, so at some point I will make it. I mean, basically all of these dresses are, let's be honest. Next, we have a sew over it dress. This is the Thea, or Thay, I'm not exactly sure how to pronounce it. But I like this because it is a very easy dress and sometimes, even though we think of little back dress, sometimes we think of it as being, being sexy. Um, this one isn't exactly form fitting, it's more of like a cocoon shape, but I still think it is quite elegant and obviously it's very comfortable. Um, this is a dress I would definitely wear. I love the shape, I think with some nice like maybe a statement necklace against the black dress, it would be really cool. Um, so this one I would go with jersey knits, um, lightweight ponties or double knits, you can do this the crepe knits here, stretch velvets or velour, wool jersey and sweater knits. This would be a really great pattern actually for a sweater knit and so I think it would be lovely for the colder weather if you made it in a sweater knit. And last, I have Simplicity 8787, and this one is a bodycon dress, but I think it's really great because it's got some like ruching coming from the side. So that is actually very flattering. So some of us, you know, we've got some... So I think it's very flattering because if you've got areas that maybe you don't want um, attention drawn to them, having these sorts of... Um, I'm gonna call it ruching there. It actually can be very flattering. So this is a great option for, for some of us, or you don't even have to. Do you, do you, I don't even know if you have to have it, or is that the back that they're showing on these dresses? Um, yeah, I think you can do either way. So you've got some sleeve options here, sleeveless, short sleeve, long sleeve, and it looks like it is fitted through the hips and it's uh, just above the knee. So I would use jersey knits, stretch velvets, or velour. Looks like that's what she's wearing here in this example. ITY, mm, you, you probably could get away with ITY. Um, it might be a little bit too thin. I think if you are using the, if you're doing the ruched version, you can definitely um, you, you could probably get away with ITY. Double brush poly, even single brush poly would, be, would work well. Okay, let's take a look at some fabrics that I have selected that could work with some of these patterns. The first one is a sweater stretch knit fabric. There are a few patterns that could use a sweater knit, one being the Badgley Mishka Vogue pattern, 1460 and there are a few others that could use this like McCall's 7313. I think this is a very nice fabric. It's got some great texture and it's not too bad. It's only eight pounds per meter. Okay, let's go to mood and we have a nice solid black Ponte fabric. I think this is about $10 a yard. So this is just a nice, standard, good quality Ponte that will work with several of these dresses. Next we have a black cotton modal fa fabric, and this is from Stylish Fabrics. This is just under $10 a yard. So this is a nice kind of, you can do a lot with this fabric. And 
cotton modal, nice um, natural fibers here mostly. And here is a nice soft suede scuba knit that I stumbled upon on Style Makers. Now check out Style Maker Fabrics. They have so many great, wonderful, high quality knit fabrics. They are on the more pricey side. You're gonna be paying more than $10 a yard, but it's totally worth it, trust me on this one. I think that this soft suede is beautiful. I would love to make something with it. I'm thinking possibly the Vogue 1593, the one that looks kind of like a biker jacket kind of dress, that could be made with this. Um, but yeah, a stretch suede, that's pretty awesome. And then I came across this beautiful sequin knit. This is on a rayon knit. It is on the price of your side of $25 a yard. However, my opinion is that sequined fabric can look cheap sometimes just depending on the fabric i think this one doesn't um so if i were to make a dress out of a sequin knit i think we talked about mccall's 8142 in fact they had a black sequin dress on as an example this would be quite beautiful and then we've got a wool jersey so there are a few dresses we we went over that could use a wool jersey again the badgley mishka dress and then several others actually uh, even one of the wrap, wrap dresses i i'm pulling mccall's 6986 the palmer pletch and then i would do a, a stretch pleather for the kind of like belt paneling i think that'd be really pretty um, wool, this is Marina wool jersey, so it, this one is $30 a yard, so that is a bit much, but wool jersey is not on the cheap side of things, and you want to make sure you get one that is soft because wool can be itchy. Then we're back over to Style Makers, and I thought it would be fun to have this, uh, sparkle ponty knit, so, you know, Ponty is a lovely fabric, but if you want to have a little bit more fun or sparkle, this is awesome. I actually have a few yards of this in my stash, and I was going to make the Davy dress with it. I'm not sure. I'm still kind of hemming and hawing, but this is a beautiful, and it comes in a couple of other colors too, not just black. Moving on, I think this one is from... Fashion Fabrics Club or one of those. Uh, everything will be linked below, don't worry, and in the order in which we're looking at it. So if you want to check something out, just look at the box below. This is a crepe scuba knit fabric. Inexpensive, $6 a yard, comes in tons of colors. So if you're interested in something other than black, there you have it. But this one, um, you could use this for most of the patterns we, we reviewed. And then we have this pretty black stretch velvet. This is, you know, what you would think a stretch velvet would be. Um, so this is a nice one for the holidays, I think. And the last one is this black Cupro jersey. Uh, this is from Surge Fabrics, and I have purchased quite a few um, different Cupro jerseys from Surge, and I love them all. Um, if you recall the Nina Lee Mayfair dress, I am wearing a Cupro jersey. It wasn't from um, Surge. I got that one from So So English. But I'm telling you, Cupro jersey is just so, it's just a joy to wear. And here we have a really nice mid-weight rayon. Um, one, I love rayon. It's one of my favorite fibers to wear. And also, if you're looking for a mid-weight fabric, so something is a little bit more substantial, this would be a really great choice. I know it is on the pricier side, but again, this is some high quality fabric and it will work for a lot, if not most, of these patterns. So, so that is it. These are all of the fabrics that I had to share with you. And this is actually the end of the video. So please let me know if you enjoyed this type of video. And if you have some suggestions for a, pa a knit sewing pattern, knit dress sewing pattern that you like, leave in the comments below. And I'd love to hear from you. And thank you so much for watching. And I'll see you in my next video.